Welcome friends to Connected, your bilingual space. It's another week and I have a new guest and a new topic. I hope you had a great week, that you are ready, already slowing down and getting ready to enjoy your weekend, whether you're going to stay home or go out, relax or work. I want to remind you that I am talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. For the people that are not watching us through the Abiyala channel because they don't have the channel or for some other reason, please let them know that they can see us through our sign on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. and it's one of my favorites. You know that on the show, I'm always telling you and always advising you to think about what do you think, what do you feel, what do you say. So always I'm trying to build relationships. That's the whole purpose of connected, right? Uh, connect with others, connect with yourself. So I'm always uh, trying to tell you that you should take care and be um, put your attention on what is on your mind, what do you say, and why not, what do you feel? Today we are going to talk about um, how can you develop a relationship with food? Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought that you can actually develop a relationship with what you ingest? In order to talk about this, we are going to connect with Pamela Wasabi. She is in Miami, USA. She has written a book about it and also she has changed her lifestyle from a person that was careless about nourishment to a person that is completely uh, knowledgeable and certified about it. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to meet Pamela Wasabi. Stay connected. Welcome back connected people, I want to thank you for remaining connected with me. As I promised before, I'm already connected with Pamela Wasabi, which is all the way in Miami. For the people that are just landing on the show, uh, today we're talking about building a relationship with the food you consume, with the food you eat. Have you ever heard about this? If not, let's meet Pamela and start talking about this because I always... Um, have the I always wanted to interview her and uh, I follow her Instagram account and all of the information she puts there it's very helpful and she has recipes and she has uh, just this beautiful information about uh, nourish food so we can finally learn about uh, what are the good things to uh, probably add to our diets and how to how, what are the best ways to cook them and to prepare them so i am more than happy to have pamela here today i'm gonna give you a little bit i'm gonna tell you a little bit about her background uh, pamela wasabi she's a mother and a plant-based chef she is certified in integrative nutrition the psychology of eating and conscious relationships she is an active player in Miami's community, hosting farm-to-table dinners, teaching cooking classes, and leading workshops on our relationship with food and nourishment. Wasabi is also the author of Nourished, the plant-based path to health and happiness, which can be found at major online retailers. In October 2016, she launched her wholesale line of plant-based baked goods, which is currently sold across Miami-Dade and Broward counties. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Pamela Wasabi. Pamela, welcome to Connected. And Thank you. More, more than more of that, I am interested in everything you have and you have to teach and your knowledge. Um, I. Uh, most of the time we listen and we see um, posts and commercials about people telling you how to eat better. But what I really wanted to, wanted to do is kind of show people how can you uh, do the transition? How do those people start worrying and 
and wanting to change what they eat today. So let's start this uh, the interview. I wanted to ask you, how was your uh, eating habits before you started this part of your life? Uh, they were terrible. <gasps> I didn't know anything about healthy food or anything about food whatsoever. I just heard, you know, what everyone hears about what it is supposed to be healthy. And I just always kind of like gravitated towards that path, but did not understand whatsoever what food or nutrients or nourishment was about. So I was pretty lost. And, you know, I think that more than lost the word is confused and i think this is the state where a lot of people find themselves in because there's tons of information out there and a lot of that information is uh, contradictory and we just don't know where to start so the cool thing about my story is that i was there as well i was confused i was lost i didn't know one thing from the other i didn't know or it had any you know uh, desire to change my lifestyle, but I did. I did. Right, and it's exactly I think the point where all of us find ourselves because uh, all of the sudden you start seeing and reading these messages telling you that what you do every day is wrong. So tell us what happened in your life that made you do the change that make you take the step and say okay i'm gonna learn about this and i'm gonna put it into practice well uh the way it happened it was like an ultimatum because uh, i got pregnant and with that also came a lot of visits to the, visits to the doctors and they told me i had a uh, hyperthyroid i have a an issue with my thyroid uh, so basically what that meant is that i couldn't uh, give birth to my baby in a natural environment. I wanted to have a home birth and I wanted to breastfeed her and that was denied to me because I had this thyroid issue. So they told me that I had to be on prescription pills for the rest of my life, that there was nothing to do, that there was not cause uh, for this, that this is just something that happens out of nowhere and that I just happened to be one of those, you know, who had a thyroid issue. Uh, by the way, almost 70% of the female population in the in United States suffers of a thyroid issue. So it's uh, something that we're seeing more common than none. And of course, there is a root issue, but this is being uh, hidden or it's not being addressed by the common traditional medical profession. So when I heard this, I was like, "This has." to be some way that has to be a solution for me to help my body balance itself so I can give my daughter her right of being born in a beautiful environment, um, you know, which was my wish to bring her into this world. So my search started, I started asking questions. I started saying, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And then the first thing that came to my mind um, was to start to, start to study nutrition. And that's how my path, my path started. I joined a nutrition school and started gaining knowledge. I started reading books about nutrition and health and uh, food and watching seminars. I mean, I started educating myself because I think that the problem is not, uh, obviously there's a bunch of information there, but we haven't taken the, we haven't uh, said, you know what, I need to educate myself. Like, we gotta take the responsibility of educating ourselves to know exactly what's going on with our bodies, with our lives, and with our health. So I right. did, you know, I took that choice, I took that chance. And uh, studying nutrition, the first main message that, you know, kind of like woke me up was, if you wanna control your health, you gotta control your ingredients because controlling your ingredients and controlling your food, you can control your well-being and your lifestyle. So that's how I got into this path. And since that moment, I had not stopped cooking. And Pamela, how long was this ago? And this was six years ago. And six. Uh, 
six six years ago and back then uh, I had another career I was in the fashion field I had a fashion store and uh, you know I will come back from my store at 8 p.m. at night I will get a cooking book or a recipe down down from the internet or from Instagram and I will just make it you know and I'll will spend the rest of my night cooking and baking and trying different recipes and experimenting and that's how I got like this little bug of you know wanting to cook and wanting to experiment and wanting to learn how to cook the right way which is with wholesome ingredients like at the end of the day it's not about your diet it's not about calories it's not about numbers it's about recognizing what food is and understanding that it's not just you are what you eat, but you eat what you are. So if you recognize yourself as a wholesome, real, authentic person that requires real food, then that is what you should seek, real food and real ingredients. Right. And, um, okay, so I, well, as I said before, I follow your, your Instagram account. So I know that you didn't only, um, uh, started on this path just to just kind of learn it and teach it but you kind of like and this is naturally right you had to like change your life and your lifestyle in order to um, make sure and see the results on your own body and probably with your also with your daughter anything you can tell us about that I end up balancing my hormones uh, midway my pregnancy. Uh, the thyroid is a gland that regulate that um, produces hormones, and those hormones regulate almost every single aspect of your system. So my hormones were out of balance, and by by getting my lifestyle back on track, I was able to balance my hormones, which gave me gave me the strength and the sanity that I needed in order to deliver my baby the way that I did. And um, from that moment, it's not that, oh, I did it, I'm done, I'm fixed, and now I can go back to eating whichever way I was eating before. What happens is that something um, gets awakened in you, and it's this awareness of recognizing that it matters, our choices matters, and the way that we choose food matters, and the way that we shop matters, and the way that uh, we use our dollar matters. So, you know, what happened more than anything else or what what needed to be um, understood here is that it's not the diet itself, you know what I mean? It's the understanding that we need to take responsibility for our own health. And having that mindset, this is the way that I lead my life and that I raise my daughter. Right, and that's a powerful message, especially nowadays. So going a little bit more to the practical way, um, any struggles you had on this transition and basically the more you learn, I'm sure that the more you were kind of like expanding uh, your, the different types of ingredients and foods that you start to ingest, uh, what was the hardest thing for you to give up or to incorporate on, in, on your diet or on your lifestyle? All right, so I'm gonna kind of like take your question into little pieces. And my message okay. is, we need baby steps, okay? We cannot expect to change from night to day. It's not because I have an emergency situation that tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be vegan naturally, right? Because our okay. lifestyle, it, what's embedded in our lifestyle are habits. And these habits are very difficult to break and it takes a process, right? So we gotta understand okay. that we are emotional beings that we feel, we have emotions, we have memories. We are attached to those memories and in order and in order to like, kind of like um, take that wall around us apart, it takes baby steps. It takes one brick at a time. It takes an understanding. It takes a development, a growth process, uh, an expansion of our minds. So patience, a lot of patience and knowing what's your goal. And the goal, the finish line, is not to be this diet or is not to be healthy. The finish line is actually unexistent. The goal is actually to work, to walk this journey, learn, expand, and grow as you go. 
So every time that you get there and you feel good, there's always something else that you're gonna want to explore, right? So first we start, let's say, with, with food and healthy habits, and you know, uh, knowing how to choose our foods. And after that, maybe you're gonna explore your um, body products and you know how you shampoo your hair or what oils or what soaps or you know whatever it is in that department you go after that. Or maybe after that, there's essential oils and then how to heal yourself with, with aromatherapy or whatever it is. So there's always so much to explore, like this universe is infinite, right? So uh, yes. there's never really a finish line because when you get there, there's always something else that you're gonna want to achieve then, right? So the purpose of this whole you know, conversation, I think, is to grasp the idea that this is a journey and a journey that we are all in together but we are kind of like experiencing individually till we grasp the bigger message and in this journey we gotta be patient we gotta be kind with, our, with ourselves we gotta have an immense amount of self-love and kind of like nourish ourselves as we go and understand that change takes time but it does happen it's a, like a bouquet of things, right? A human being and all the different aspects that we have kind of like get in touch with and to, to learn every day and, and after every experience. What do you say? I completely agree. Um, so in order to change your diet or lifestyle, right? You go finding things, you go learning things and it's always a continued work. Um, yeah. Tell us, how did you get to write the book, Nourish? And how was that experience for you? Okay, so after I um, started, I studied nutrition, I also uh, went to um, psychology of eating school. And I think that this was my biggest aha moment. Uh, you know, maybe first learning how to cook and understanding that my the food that I cook determines my health was one you know big awakening but then understanding the psychology that is that there is that exists behind the food that we eat changed my life entirely and then gave me kind of like the guide um of connecting and expressing all these ideas that i have about food because we have a relationship with food and this is not a subject that is you know talk about in the media or you know in the health industry as much you know we always want results and i think that <clears throat> the deepest talk which is about emotions spirituality and the way that you understand and see yourself it's kind of like forgotten or um we think that it's very blah 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 and so we don't pay attention to it but the way that i like to see it is uh, as a type of intelligence so emotions spirituality connection love it's a type of intelligence and we gotta explore that so having a relationship with food or studying psychology of eating allowed me to understand this deep, intimate relationship that we have with food. And what that means is that it's not only calories in and calories out, it's actually nothing to do with calories or numbers. It's about your understanding about food and the concept that you have about food. So we all have different issues, different emotions, different situations, different, different habits, lifestyle, culture, and it kind of like shapes our mind in the way that we see food. So when we sit at the table, we have all this story about food and that story determines the way that we're gonna digest food, right? So somebody that right. sits in the table that is completely scared about food because that's one of the main messages that right now we are getting bombarded with through the media is thinking that food is the enemy, that food makes us fat and that we gotta fear food because you know, food is um, is the enemy pretty much. So, you know, when we sit down at the table and we have all these thoughts of uh, fear in our mind, our body gets into a stress response and thinks that it's being attacked by this imaginary threat that we're creating in our minds because of this story that we have. And then at the end, at the end, when you finish your meal, you cannot digest your meal, you cannot assimilate your calories or your nutrients, you cannot absorb nutrients whatsoever because your body is such, is such in a state of stress that your first uh -huh. response is, to, um, is of survival. And when you need to survive, the last thing you need to do is to eat. So you simply shut off your digestive system, you stress 
you, you stress your whole entire body up, you start releasing cortisol, which is your stress hormone, and then a lot right. of uh, activities happen in your body that completely um, denies the power that you have to actually extract what you need from food to get the energy, the nourishment, the vitamins, and the nutrients that you need, right? So. This psychology, I'm just talking about about a very specific case, which is when we sit at the table to eat and there's fear around food. But like that case, there's so many cases and so many understandings about as understandings about food that each of one, each one of us has. So you know, food can be love for you, and then every time that you sit at the table, you have this immense appetite for life and for really digesting the food and connecting with the food and respecting it and giving giving thanks to it and understanding that it comes from nature and that you are nature itself. So there's this connection with food, right? But at the same time, you can sit at the table, <laughs> have had your the most stressful day that you can ever imagine, and uh, the last thing you want to do is to eat and then food becomes, you know, like one more thing that you have to do. So it's unpleasant, it's boring, it's, you know, right. pathetic. Right. And then that is what you're going to absorb from food as well. So point here is, and what brought me to uh, write this book, is that when, we, when it comes to food, actually, the last thing that I'm going to tell you is what to eat, <laughs> right? Starting from the... <laughs> basing ourselves in the concept that food is only real ingredients. For me, something that, it, that, has, that doesn't have real ingredients is not considered a food. So if I tell you eat food, it's about eating real food, real ingredients, food that comes from the earth, that you know where you're buying it from, that you know how the farmer treated it, that you are, you are respecting it, and it's food that has been honored because um, it was uh, brought, it was planted, it was brought up to life, it was water, it was brought to the supermarket and it was bought with respect, right? So, right. you know, let's do the conversation about food. It's not about food, but it's about how you how you show up to the table, right? And what your thoughts are, are saying about food and what you yourself, uh, the story that you are telling yourself about yourself and how you see yourself and how you respect yourself. So this book is that, it's exploring the relationship that we have about food, which really have the book here. Uh -huh. It's called uh, Nourish, the plant-based path to health and happiness. And um, the whole idea is that for me, in the path, the way that I befriend food is through this path of um, plant-based, this discovery of plant-based cuisine that I had. But my invitation is not to instill a dogma in you, but in my invitation is to um, is to invite you to understand that you yourself have a very intimate relationship with food, and it's your job to discover it, to um, explore it, and to enjoy it. You know, that's right. that's the health and happiness. Enjoy your moment, your now, your choices, um, your responsibilities. Right, not only your job, but your responsibility because nobody else can do it for you, right? Nobody else. Pamela, not... I love the information that you are sharing with us. We're gonna go to a cut and we'll be right back with the last question. Please hold it for me and people at home, stay connected, we'll be right back with the last question for Pamela. Thank you for remaining connected, people. Um, we're ready with Pamela and the last question for her. Pamela, what would be your advice to the people that are curious about uh, a diet based on plants? What, what would be the best approach uh, based on your experience? It's not about taking from the plate, it's about adding. So if you are scared of eating a plant-based lifestyle, if you don't know where to start, whatever your plate is, start adding. First add and then, you know, start leaving things behind. So if your regular uh, food plate um, constitutes of a piece of chicken, rice and potatoes, then add a salad to it. And then the next okay. day add a grain to it or change the rice for quinoa or uh, you know our su add a superfood or start adding superfoods to your salad to your rice to your potatoes whatever it is the whole point is that you have to enjoy this journey if you don't enjoy it it's not worth it <laughs> so uh, make it fun always you gotta make it fun you are creative because you have a brain 
and uh, everyone is capable <laughs> of finding solutions to our own problems. That's what creativity is made for. So make it fun, enjoy it, and first add before, sub uh, subtract before subtracting. Pamela, all your knowledge is priceless. Um, I'm gonna give you space now for you to kind of say a hello to people here in Bolivia and also to give your information. If people would like to follow you or to learn more about uh, what do you do and uh, what do you know, uh, just let them know right now. Go ahead. Sure, so thank you so much for tuning in today. It's my pleasure and to talk about this subject. I can actually talk about it forever. For me, it's super me important to awaken the collective conscious about our connection with nature. It's super important that we start taking uh, this awareness into consideration that we are so much more than what we see. And we gotta pay attention to little details. We gotta respect the earth. We gotta respect our bodies. We gotta respect our life. And that is all about okay. the choice to make for yourself. So I invite yeah. you to um, connect within, to nourish your body, nourish your family, nourish your, your kids, and uh, cook more at home, uh, ask more questions, be curious. And uh, I'm here for anything that you need, any questions. I also speak Spanish. So if you feel the, bar the English is a barrier, just feel free to uh, shoot me a question in Spanish through my Instagram or Facebook or my website. It's all Pamela Wasabi or PamelaWasabi.com. It's my website. So thank you for listening and I hope you get some insights from my information. Pamela, I am thrilled with this information. Thank you so much for the time you spent with us and for connecting with me. Um, I'll see you next time. Always be well. My Goodbye. pleasure. Okay. After listening to Pamela's experience and everything she has learned and in just a few minutes taught us, I want to leave you with a, with a message in your head that maybe we should think a little bit, what is the future for us? What is the future for yourself? What is the future for your planet? Do you think we are going to the right path? Even for as much as we can have um, medical support and we can have a lot of information on the internet. I think that the minimum and the basic thing that we can do is probably pay attention to what we ingest and what do we feed to others that we love. I think it's a very basic and very, um, very important, but also very basic uh, activity and habit that we do every day. It's something that we should give it a thought and we should uh, kind of learn about it because we don't find this type of knowledge or this type of information on schools. We kind of, if we don't get, if we don't take this as a career, we don't get to learn it. So take the time. There is a lot of information, a lot of people like Pamela that is devoting their lives in order to be able to give you this information. So just go use the powerful tool that the internet is and find out. I want to remind you that I will see you again in seven days with a new topic and a new guest. If you know anybody in this world that is doing something great for their community or for themselves, please let me know. Shoot me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. It's probably written some, somewhere here on the screen and uh, I'll be more than happy to connect with you and I'll be more than happy to actually be able to connect you with the rest of the world. I will leave you with that advice and I will see you again in one week. Have a great day, enjoy your weekend and until next time with me, stay connected.